Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Jen. I work for Foundry, and it is my absolute great pleasure today to introduce Jeremy Smith. Jeremy Smith is a fellow Canadian of mine, and he's here by way of London. He uh, works just down the street from our Foundry HQ in Soho. I've known Jeremy since we started working together 10 years ago or something like that, so it's my honor to introduce him. Jeremy Smith, CTO of Jellyfish Pictures. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, guys, and uh, thanks, Jen. And as you say, uh, yes, I'm originally from Canada. Uh, now living in London, and I work for a company called Jellyfish Pictures in the UK. So, um, yeah, I just kind of want to kick the presentation off just by showing you some of the work that, we got, uh, that we've done. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that is some of the work that we've done um, over the past several years. And, um, sorry, guys. Yeah, so um, the, the title of this presentation is called Scaling Bef uh, Beyond Your Four, Four Walls. Um, I gave a talk to the Foundry team in London just on how we're using, um, like, workflows with Nuke, Nuke Studio, and, and um, cloud-based computing. So, um, yeah, so they've asked me to present the same thing here, so I was more than happy to do so. Um, I am the CTO of Jellyfish, so I drive everything from a technology standpoint, and um, yeah, hope you enjoy the show. So, I mean, we're really proud of the work that, um, that we've done over the past year. We do things like resurrect extinct dinosaurs. We did this for the BBC in the UK. We work on uh, work for Netflix and the Black Mirror, creating re cool ro robotic bees. And we even have a chance to um, have had a chance to work with the Jedi, which is pretty cool. So we're pretty, pretty proud of the work we've done with Rogue One. Just to give you a bit of background, um, for those who don't know anything about Jellyfish, we've won several awards over the past few years. Um, this includes the VES Awards, uh, BAFTA Awards, and everything. So we're really proud of the work that we've done. We're about 200 artists um, in total. So, and this is spread over four different offices in three different locations around, around Greater London. Uh, the type of work that we do is full CG, film, broadcast, motion graphics, and 2D animations for feature film, broadcasts, commercials, and you know, so forth. Um, as you guys know, ma making movie magic requires a lot of different skill sets, such as designers, riggers, technicians, animators, uh, and many, many more. We can get all these, all, all these staff and all these resources together, but for us, with doing more work on Ultra HD and 5K and even beyond, rend uh, rendering and transcoding is the bottleneck into producing the, the content we need to get out. 
So that's, that's one of the challenges that we have. And um, I, I'd be curious, do you, I mean, do you guys have any rendering bottleneck issues as well? I'm sure you do. Yeah, I'm seeing like, yes. OK, cool. So, um, so that, that was um, the problem number one that we had. And we, when you said, OK, it's problem number two is that um, in London, we've um, expanded. And obviously, finding like real estate like just for people to sit is actually a really uh, is a big big challenge. So that's the problem that we kind of had, that we have is you know where, where do you where do you literally sit people? Um, have you guys ever have you guys ever been to London here or no? Okay, cool. Well, basically this is a, a very very brief map uh, of London, um, and so obviously our main office is located here in that part of the city, um, and here we opened up another studio in Brixton which is the opposite side. They call it the Thames, which is, but it's really a big river. Uh, and then we have recently opened up another two studios there. So basically, we have four different geographic locations. But our, our, the, what we wanted to do was we wanted to basically have all, everyone in all these four different locations work as if they're under one, one roof, essentially. So, so how, how do we do that? So we've cracked that by using a technology called PC over IP and using um, cloud-based resources and uh, rackable workstations. Uh, we're, we're running on Azure for, for a lot of our um, cloud compute. And because essentially if we had, if we wanted someone basically working out of the um, Soho office, so out of the Oxford Circus studio, we, and if they basically needed to access an asset that's down in the Brixton studio, we wanted that to be completely seamless. So how do we get all these 200 people spread over different locations around? Uh, and PC over IP solves that for us when using cloud-based resources, as well as um, things like software-defined storage and so forth. Um, we're really happy with PC over IP, but we really, really wanted to push the tech just to see how far we could go. Because with that protocol, we're actually not limited to, to just um, these four places. So, um, about about a year year or so ago, I was actually on a plane, and I just really want to push it. So I logged onto the free Wi-Fi, and here I am, basically in an in, a, in an Autodesk app, and this is managing a render farm for about 10,000 feet in the air. So what this is, what what let me explain what's happening here is that, you know, I have full access to everything that we would have on premise, but I get but I can then access it from wherever I'm online, essentially. So this is pretty cool because obviously I don't have a massive, big, honky workstation with me on this on this plane. Um, Artist Connect uses what's called like a zero client, so it's just about a, the size of an old VHS videotape. Uh, we're using PC over IP as the uh, transport protocol, and um, we are using a GPU pass through. So what GPU pass through means is that on this laptop, it's like. Uh, you know, it's relatively inexpensive. It's not. It's not that. Not that expensive. And this is a software version of a zero client. But I am being presented with a full GPU. In this case, it's an M60. So it, it basically, I have got a you know a graphics card that's worth several thousand dollars that I'm accessing remotely, which is pretty cool. Um, so going back to the first um, the, to the rendering problem. So the you know the problem of, of distances is solved and be able to decentralize the studio is pretty cool. Um, but when r w working with cloud-based workflows and rendering means no more late nights, no more pizza boxes piling up waiting for renders, as I'm sure you guys have had some over the years. I have. And um, no more calls to your partner or spouse explaining why you're going to be home late while you're w waiting for uh, things. So we try, um, at Jellyfish, we try and let people get home on time. And we don't want base, you know, people waiting for renders or just jobs to finish. You know, they're hanging around for a few hours, twiddling their thumbs, having having pepperoni pizza, then wait, wait till 9 o'clock to start comping their shots. So um, yeah, we like to try and keep our staff happy. So when dealing with cloud-based um, re rendering, it's basically fast, it's cheap, it's on demand, it's off-site, and, and effectively, it's, it's almost unlimited. So when I say fast, I'm, I'm referring to the speed of provisioning here. So what that allows us to do is it allows us to spin cores upon demand. So again, we really want to push this aspect of it. And um, we were able to spin up about 7,000 cores in about 20 minutes. So um, you know, it just shows you like, the elasticity of what cloud-based workflows can bring to your studio. And so if we were to go and provision that normally, it would, it would realistically take us weeks to do that. And now we could just do it, do it in a few clicks. And 20 minutes later, they're online and rendering. 
um, is cheap. And so what I mean to that is that all of the administration costs is we don't have to deal with anymore. So like things like powering, cooling, and hard drives blowing up, and blades dying. I mean, all, all that is just gone. And so we are just presented like, with the raw compute, and we just use that, consume it, and don't have to pay for it. So we don't have to worry about air conditioning, maintenance, and all that sort of stuff. So it's really, really handy. Um, and it's, it's also on demand. So basically, you know, it's just there when you need it. So if you want to fire it up, it's there. You render and then shut it down. So, you know, we, we've never really had any major issue with that. Uh, it kind of off-site. So basically, that kind of goes back to what I was referring to earlier. Again, you don't have to worry about rack space in your offices. I know in, uh, in London, real estate is at a, at a premium. The last thing you want to do is actually put, fill it full of, like, computer racks. So, and, um, yeah. So if we take a look... Here, sorry, could you just guy kill, kill the screen for a sec? I just need to bring up something here. The Wi-Fi is. I'm just going to try and show you something off, but the uh, Wi-Fi is not brilliant in, in the show floor here. All right, cool. So if you sw swap it back. So this is our render farm uh, back, in, uh, in back in the UK, and this is happening right now. And basically, we're, we very, very much want to work in a hybrid mode. So if I see like this group here, um, these are basically on-prem blade centers that we have. However, what's cool here is that basically we have this group called Cloud One. And we can grow that pool to as many VMs or as many uh, you know, machines, as many cores as we want. Now, say, for example, I mean, this, this is the job that's currently rendering here, right here. Now, if I select, yeah, sorry, my Wi-Fi is bombed out. There we are. So if I select that, and if I want, basically wanted to assign it to, like, to say, to that group, hit apply, that means that I'm now rendering on my on my um, on-premise blades, and that, then also rendering in the cloud. So, which is really cool because obviously, a lot of studios they have existing hardware that they want to utilize that they want to capitalize. They don't, they don't want to throw that away when using cloud-based tech. We certainly didn't. So now we've got a hybrid solution where we can uh, we can do this, and we've actually um, got a lot of interest with these sort of workflows. And so, and you know, we're, we're actually obviously really proud of the work we've done uh, with Microsoft and. Um, yeah, we've actually decided to do a, like a spin-up consultancy business called uh, RenderWise that helps people get to the cloud using these sort of technologies, um, if if they would like. Um, I'll do I'll do a Q and A after. So, yeah, it just kind of allows you to to change. You know, it allows us to change the way that content is being created, um, and and uh, all this is running on on Azure. And if you want to see like one of the zero clients up and running, there's one on the Microsoft stand. So. Um, that concludes the, uh, this presentation, but I thought I'd leave some questions at the end, time for questions at the end. So if anyone has any, uh, yeah, feel free, to go, feel free to shoot. Uh, do you simulate on your blades or do you simulate on the cloud? It doesn't matter. We can do either or. So say, for example, I mean, if you have a massive, like, say, sim you want to pump up, you can basically fire up some VMs, 40 cores each, plow through them, you know, 200 gigs of RAM or whatever do your sim, then basically then shut those VMs down when you're done. So basically, it's simulations, rendering, it's workstations, all, all in a hybrid model. So that's, that's you know, and it's not only rendering, but obviously when you're working in uh, like Ultra HD content, your sim has, your sim has to hold up to, to a 4K res or 5K res and beyond. So I mean, simulation is another workload that we can dump on this. Great. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Anybody else? So, yeah. All right. Well, I hope that uh, I hope that was uh, beneficial for you guys. And uh, I know it's a bit short, short and sweet, but it kind of gives you a uh, just a really good you know viewpoint of what's possible, with, like you know going forward in the future. So, yeah.